How's it going my bakers? Hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another Easter recipe. Today we're making pan de ramerino, which is a Tuscan rosemary and raisin bun. So let's go to the kitchen and get started. Italians really know how to make a great festive bread. From Christmas to Easter, you can find plenty of recipes on my channel. And there's so many more to discover. They're all unique and tasty. But this one might be the most unique one when it comes to flavor. Rosemary and raisins is quite an uncommon combination. And I was skeptical at first, but once I tried these buns, I got convinced it really works. And they don't just taste great, just look at that texture. These bad boys are so soft and light. Finished with a nice shiny sticky glaze, they'll impress anyone this Easter. So let's just get right to it and see what exactly we need to make these. Starting with some white bread flour, water, yeast, salt, sugar or honey, olive oil, fresh rosemary, some raisins or currants, and some kind of liquid to soak them in. I've seen some classic recipes suggesting a sweet red wine, so that's what I'm using. But you can soak them in any liquid that you like. We'll also need an egg for glazing before the buns go in the oven, and we'll need some sugar and water for glaze to top the buns with once they come out the oven, for that sticky, sweet, shiny crust. Okay, as for the equipment, we'll need a tray with some nonstick paper, a bowl, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe, a brush, a whisk and a small pot, which we'll use for infusing our olive oil with rosemary. And with all that out of the way, let's begin. Starting first with soaking the raisins, or the currants, whichever you decide to use. Simply drop them in a bowl and pour over the liquid. Leave them on the side, and whilst they are soaking, we can get on with the other steps. The second thing we're going to do is infusing the olive oil with rosemary. So combine the rosemary and the olive oil in a small saucepan, bring it over to the hob. Place it down on medium heat and keep it there until it just starts bubbling and then remove it straight away. As soon as you see bubbles, it's ready. Now quickly transfer your rosemary oil to another bowl to cool down. Leave that on the side, and now we can get on with the next step, making the flying sponge pre-ferment. This will make our buns jump up and rise real well. We'll combine part of the total water, all of the yeast, and part of the total flour of this recipe. We'll mix it until it's all well combined, then cover it and leave it to ferment for around 45 minutes. Rolls like these benefit from such a pre-ferment. The dried food can make the dough heavy, and all that sugar will slow down fermentation, but the flying sponge will counteract those. It'll make the dough rise at a normal rate, like it should. So once you mix up your pre-ferment, cover it up so it doesn't dry out, and leave it to sit for 45 minutes until it's well puffed up. And this will give enough time for our raisins to soak and our oil to cool down. And just look at that, the pre-ferment has puffed up beautifully. It is ready to be used. But we'll start with draining the raisins. Use a sieve and a bowl. If you don't have a sieve, just use a colander, your hands, whatever. And don't think I'm going to discard this wine. There's nothing wrong with it. That's going in my glass in a minute. There's one thing we don't need to worry too much about here. It's just temperature control. Just use room temperature ingredients. If your dough comes out warmer, it will ferment more rapidly. If it's cooler, it will take longer. Just keep an eye on it. Of course, if your kitchen is in the extreme temperatures, then you may want to control the temperature a little bit. You can use warmer water for the main dough, or use cooler water if you need to, and even cool down the pre-ferment, or keep the raisins in the fridge. There's many options. I'll leave those to you. But let's get on with the main dough. In a large bowl, I combined the remaining water, the salt, the sugar, the oil, the raisins, and the pre-ferment. Now we can give it all a good mix, disperse the ingredients evenly, make sure the salt and sugar are dissolved. Once that's done, we're adding the final ingredient, the remaining white flour. Now grab your dough scraper and mix it to a dough until there's no dry flour left. And did I mention this is a no-knead recipe? We're going to replace the kneading with a couple of folds. There's no need to knead this dough. Now pop it in a bowl and take its temperature for reference. Mine came out just right at 24 degrees Celsius or 75 Fahrenheit. So I'm going to leave it to bulk ferment for an hour and a half. But as I mentioned, we're going to fold this dough to build some tension. We'll give it two folds, one after 30 minutes and then another one 30 minutes later. So take your dough out the bowl, place it smooth side down, then fold it over itself whilst you're going around in a circle. Keep going until you have a nice tight bowl, then flip it smooth side up again and tighten it against the table. Don't worry about the raisins falling out, that's totally normal. And there's no need to use any flour here, this dough is not sticky at all. Once your dough is nice and tight, pop it back into the bowl, cover it up, leave it to ferment for another 30 minutes. Now give it a second fold, just the same as earlier. And now we can all see that kneading this dough would be a waste of time and energy. I reckon even one fold would have been enough. It's been an hour and a half, the dough is puffed up nicely, bulk fermentation is done. Weigh your dough ball and then divide it into 5 equal pieces. This time I decided to skip the pre-shaping step. Because the raisins are poking out of the dough, it's not very smooth anyway, 
I thought we can skip it this time, and it won't make much of a difference, which it didn't. So we're going from dividing to final shaping straight away. And shaping works the same way as folding. Flatten your dough, fold it over itself, go around in a circle until it's nice and tight, then flip it smooth side up, tighten it against the table, pick up any stray raisins, pinch the seam together at the bottom, and that's your dough ball done. Now repeat that four more times and you'll be a pro by the end. You can also shape them differently if you want. I don't think they have to be round buns. Give them whichever shape that you like, they'll still taste the same. You could divide them into more pieces and braid them. Or you could give them an oblong shape. But whichever shape you choose, once they're all shaped up, place them on a tray with some nonstick paper. And pick off any stray raisins because they will just burn in the oven. Final proofing time will rely on the temperature of your kitchen. It took me around an hour and a half. During the final hour of fermentation, preheat the oven, 160 degrees Celsius with the fan on, and that's 320 degrees Fahrenheit for my American friends. You want the buns to puff up really good. If they don't wobble when you shake the tray, then already, leave them for longer. Scoring is optional, you can use a razor blade, you can use a knife, or you can use scissors. I saw them scored with this double cross pattern, I ended up absolutely butchering them trying to recreate it. The raisins really get in the way of this. I think simple scoring with scissors would be the best option here. When it comes to glazing with egg, you can do it before or after scoring. If you want a thicker glaze, you can brush them once, leave them to dry for 5 minutes and then brush them again. After glazing, pop these bad boys in the oven, they'll take around 25 minutes to fully bake. And they are baking up beautifully, just look at them puff up. Right just before the buns are ready, let's make our hot sugar syrup. In a small pan, combine the water and the sugar. Set the pan on high heat and let it come up to a boil. As soon as it starts boiling, take it off. The buns should be ready by now, so let's pull them out of the oven. As soon as they come out, brush them with the hot sugar syrup. Glaze them nice and evenly and use up all the syrup. This is the perfect glaze to use for sweet buns after baking. It softens the crust, it gives them extra sweetness and that nice sticky texture. And it might just keep them from staling for a little bit longer too. And there you have it. That's how you make Pan de Ramerino. Tuscan Rosemary Raisin Buns. Perfect for Easter. If you want more Easter recipes, check out that playlist on my channel. It's full of different festive recipes from around the world. And they're not just sweet, there's a couple of savory ones in there too. I'm really looking forward to seeing some Easter recipes in our Flickr group. And finally, if I may ask you something, click that thumbs up button. It really helps me out, it helps out the video, helps out the channel, it doesn't cost you anything. All I want to do is expose as many people as possible to these awesome recipes. So what do you think this recipe? Which is your favorite Easter bread? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.